Hello friends, welcome back to DigiTalk. In this video, we are going to discuss about the DR drills. So I'm sure if you are landed on this video, then you are aware about what, that, what exactly is DC and what is DR. Okay, it's even you are not aware about that one. Okay, so let me clear you on that. So, so DR is a replication of DC. So what does it mean? So we all know about the data center. It is a center where our all the application are hosted. Right. So for the business continuity, there is a parallel data center is get created, which we call as a DR. What, what is the full form of DR? It is disaster recovery. And the purpose of that is in case of any disaster in your primary data center, your applications should continue to work from the disaster recovery. OK, so you can say it is a parallel data center. OK, and we refer it as a DR because we use it in case of any disaster in your primary data center. Now, the disaster could be any, it could be a natural disasters, or it could be a man mistakes, man made mistakes, human mistakes. Right. So, in a nutshell, you can say that if your data center is get crashed due to any reasons, your application should be accessible from the DR, that means from the disaster recovery centers. Right. So, as I said, it is a parallel data center. So, what exactly we need? We need the complete setup of hardware and application in the DR as well, whatever we have in the DC, right? To minimize the cost, most of the time, or sometimes, some of the some of the clients configured only the half, you know, 50% capacity of your DC in the DR. That means whatever the hardware you have in the uh, DC, they configured the DR with the half of that capacity to save the cost, okay? And sometimes if they wanted to configure some critical applications only in the DR, okay? And some of the times you will see that the configuration of DC and DR is same in terms of hardware and then software and everything. Now, uh, to handle such situation where I'm saying that in case of any disaster in your DC, your application should be accessible from the DR, okay, to ensure that your DR is working perfectly all the time and that your data from the primary data center is getting synced in your DR, okay, the client does the DR testing regularly. This is based on the policy. Some organization does this testing in the every uh, three months. Someone does this in the uh, six months. Someone in the in, in a year of time. Okay. And the purpose of that is only to ensure that you are just a recovery center and applications are working perfectly all the time. Right. So this is the basic concept of DC and DR. Okay. And in this video, I am going to tell you about the complete concept of DR drills, how we do DR drills. And in fact, not only the concept, along with that, I'm going to explain you about the exact action plan that most of the time we follow during the DR drills, how you can do the uh, setup of DR drills and how we can do the configurations of your application for the DR testing. Okay, so let us begin with that one. So let us first start with the basic architecture, okay, of our data center and then DR. Suppose that you have a two data centers. The first one is in India and second is in US. The primary data center is in India and then which is in US, it is called as a secondary data center, which you can refer as a DR, disaster recovery, or sometimes it is referred as standby, right? Now you have some software and hardware in your primary data center. Similarly, you will have a certain set of hardware and software in your data center in the primary or secondary data center, which is also called the DR as well. Capacity, as I said, again, based on the requirement of the clients, okay, it could be half of your DC or it could be full as well as like just a replication of your DC, right? Now, how we access the application? Suppose that we are accessing an application. Suppose it is a URL of Google, okay, Google application, google.com. So whenever a user hit that URL, okay, the first request goes to your DNS server. And the, what is the purpose of DNS server? To resolve your DNS to the IP address. Okay, so here what we are accessing is google.com. So google.com is a DNS, it's not an IP, right? So whenever you hit in the browser, your browser contact the DNS server for resolving this DNS to the corresponding IP. Okay, in our case, suppose that it is a load balancer IP of your primary data center, right? You can directly access the website using IP address as well, if it is allowed, okay? But this is not the recommended approach because it's not feasible for you to remember the IP address of each and every website that you access over the internet, right? And that's why we have the DNS server in between where we get the user-friendly 
DNS name for our application. So, okay, so most of the time directly accessing you with the help of IP address is not allowed. Okay, so whenever you access any website, it, the request goes to DNS and from DNS it resolves to IP address and then from IP address the request comes inside to a data center where you have applications running on the different servers, right? And the same structure we have with the DR as well, right? Now, our data center, primary data center is getting updated each and every day, each and every hour and second, right? That means some business transactions or data is flowing, your configurations, update, and everything is going in your primary data center, right? And DR, what I was said is that we use in case of any disasters. So that means whatever the data that you have that you have in your primary data center, whatever the data that you're getting in your primary data center, whatever the updates of the software, applications you're performing in your data center, whatever the data is getting updated in your database, it has to be replicated at the real time in your DR as well, right? So you have two part, one is you have a software, second part is the database. So when we do the replication of our software part, that we say it as an empty sync, middle tier sync. And when we do the replication of data, it is called database sync. So there are different technologies and softwares are available for the uh, for MT and DB sync between DC and DR, okay? And in DC, we have the multiple hosts, so they have a corresponding host names. Similarly, in the DR, you have multiple hosts and they have their own corresponding host name. And the same is applicable for your database server IPs as well, right? So when the DR is applicable, when your data center get crashed, then we initiate the DR testing, right? Okay. Now there are certain questions that has been arrived from this structure, okay, and that we do take care during the DR drills. The first one is MT and DB servers have been different host name and IPs, right? So the software that we have configured in our primary data center they have a different servers and they have a different host names and when we install the softwares we define either the host name or ip entries in our configuration files right for the softwares all of the softwares and configurations so now here if we are saying that our data complete data is getting replicated from primary data center to your dr right but if my applications from the primary data centers are getting replicated in my dr there you have a different host name for the servers then how your application will going to work Suppose that you have uh, an application server like WebLogic is running and you have some deployed some applications there. And in the WebLogic, you have a listen address for your admin server, manage server, node managers, and you have defined the host name of the primary data center and the same configuration files, same complete setup of your middle tier, you have copied to your DR, right? The how you are going to handle the situation, how you are going to replace the host name of your DR servers in the configuration files. So there is a certain technique to handle that during the testing. I will explain that one. And second, my DNS is pointing to primary database, uh, data center LB, IP, right? So as I said that whenever we hit the request, it goes to DNS, from DNS, it moved to load balancer IP, and then from load balancer IP, it moved to inside, to your data center. So now in second case, my DNS is pointing to primary data center load balancer. That means if I have a data center like DR, I would have a, one more load balancer which is there in the DR region, right? Because there are two different data centers. So we configure that in a different region. Okay, so in that case, I will have a different load balancer in the DR region. So in case, suppose that we have certain some kind of a disaster where I'm saying that DC is completely down, that means your load balancer is also not working there, right? So what we'll do in that case? In that case, we will just repoint our DNS server to the IP address of my DR load balancer. Right. So my all the applications will be accessible from the DR. Right. And then my DNS, instead of pointing to the load balancer of uh, DC, it will point to the load balancer IP of my DR. But the, still the question that is open, open, how you we are going to manage or how we are going to change the host name entries of our, in our configuration files in the DR software in configuration files. Right. So now when we talk about the DR testing for at the load balancer level, then we have a different approach for that that we will discuss in the next few slides. So now question two is resolved. How we are going to fail over our DNS? We have to point, or you can say we have to repoint our DNS server to the load balancer IP of our DR, right? But the still question one is open. How we are going to change the host name entries for MTN DB, right? And the third question could be how to sync MTN DB. 
right? And what is the action plan for DR drill and testing? Okay, so how to address question one? When I'm saying that we have a uh, different set of servers in DC and DR, and where we are replicating our complete software and configuration files from DC to DR, then how we are going to change the host name entries? The first one is just run the search and replace command in your DR servers, where you have to replace the each and every host name which is matching to your DC with the host name of your DR. You have to run this search and replace in in the complete software, right? In the DR region. But that is a bit complicated and not feasible. Every time you are doing a DR testing, you, you have a big size of your hard uh, softwares and binaries. And every time you are running uh, the search and replace, it's not a feasible solution. Second option is the host file mapping of DR server that we do most of the time doing the DR drills testing. Now, what does it mean? Whenever we hit any URL from our browser, it goes for the DNS server, right? Now, if we defined the hostname and DNS entry in our local host file, then our local host file is the first DNS server where our browser reach. So what does it mean? In the previous slide, I explained that if I'm going to access the google.com, it will hit the DNS server. From DNS server, it will resolve to my IP address of load balancer, and then the request will go inside the data center. If I will replace, or if I will add a new entry in my etc host file, okay, etc host in the Linux, and similarly, you have a different location in the Windows. So if I will add a entry for the google.com along with a dummy IP, okay, in my that file, so whenever I will hit the google.com it will first try to resolve the ip address that i have defined in my etc host file okay if there is no entry then it will definitely go to the internet dns server and then it will try to resolve but if i have defined any entry for any of the dns corresponding to an ip in my ho local host file then my local host file will act as a local dns resolver okay so what what does it mean here is that I said to you that in DC, you have a different servers, which is having a different uh, host names, which is defined in your configuration files. And now in DR, your challenge is to replace all the host name of DCs with the DR host names, right? So in local host file of DR, what exactly you need to be done is, this is your DC servers, and these are your DR servers, right? So the host name is different and the IP address is also different. So what exactly we need to be done in the host file of DR server is that corresponding to the host name of DR, we have to add the IP address of our DR servers, right? So what we have done here is we have added the prod host and then the corresponding IP as DR IP. Why this? Because in the all the configuration files, we have the DNS name of prod servers, right? That's why we have added in the host file of DR is prod host one, prod host one, prod host. And then corresponding to that, that second entry is wrong in the ETC host file, it should be prod host two, okay? This is a typo. So for corresponding to each and every DNS or corresponding to each and every host name in our DR host file, we have added the corresponding IP address of the DR server. Now what will happen when we will start our servers, in the DR region, okay? It will look for the DNS host names, which we have defined in the configuration file, which is of the production. And when it will go for the resolving that host name, because we are now we have defined the corresponding IPs of DR in the ETC local host file. So the primary server host names will resolve to the IP address of DR. It's a very straightforward. What exactly we are doing is simple. We are replacing uh, the host name of our production with the IP address of DR. So what exactly we are doing is we are just updating the local host file of our each and every DR server where we are adding the entries of each and every production host name along with that corresponding mapping of my DR IPs, right? So that means DR host entries mapped with the DC IPs, okay? This is again wrong entry. So what we are doing is DR host entries mapped to DR IPs, okay? So this is again a typo. Please consider it as a DC host entries mapped with DR IPs. So now when we will start our services in the DR region, the corresponding host name of the primary data center, which is there in the configuration file, will be resolved at the DR IP. 
okay so you don't need to change anything manually now more ways of load balancing testing lb testing okay so so far in the previous slide what we have discussed about how we can change the host name entries between the dc and dr right by the mapping of ips okay second case is the primary interfacing for our application is the url which we use to access our application okay and when we access any application as i said it first hit the dns server and from dns server it goes to the load balancer ip right so now we have a two different regions for dc and dr so that we have a two different corresponding load balancers in the dc and dr so if we are saying that <clears throat> either our data center primary data center is trashed or we are doing the dc drills so that means in both cases our dns should point to the dr load balancer right so the first approach is with the or you can say the drawback with the generic approach what we have discussed in the initial slide if we are changing our dns to point from primary data center to secondary data center that means we have an outage for application right till that we are going to reflect or we are going to change the uh, load balancer ip from primary data center to secondary data center it is an outage right we are pointing to load balancer ip in the different region okay and but in that case what will happen is in that case our production will be down for some time till we will switching the dns okay so this is something that we can avoid when we especially when we are doing the dr drills okay because most of the client don't prefer to have an outage for the dr testings okay then for that we have some different approach right so one of the approach of testing but is there any other way of testing without bringing down the production so do we have any option apart from that one what we have discussed so far where we should not bring down the production application so that yes we have an option which is just like we have done in previous slide for the host name mapping right where we have mapped our host name of the production with the corresponding ips of the dr server similarly we can map the load balancer ips in our local host file right so what i said whenever we access any url okay it look for it, it first look for the resolving at our local host file and if there is no entries then it will go to the your internet dns server for to identify the corresponding ip right but if it will identify any of the dns and the corresponding ip in a local host file then it will try to resolve that ip address is going to the internet right so now if we are saying that we have to do the testing of our application without bringing down the production not any of the production so what we can do is that we can map our local system host file so what is local system i am not talking about the dr server because in for in case of servers we have done the modification or you can say the mapping of host name and ip in the dr servers host file right but now because we are going to access that this url from our local system that means our from local pc desktop laptop or mobile device or or any device right from where we are going to access the application that means in that local system local host file we have to map the, the dns url with the ip address of your dr region so this is our dc load balancer ip and dr load balancer ip right so the primary load balancer ip is 192.168.10.7 and the secondary dr load balancer ip is 192.168.10.8 so what we are doing is there during the dr drill is we are updating our local pc host file where we are mapping google.com with the ip address of the dr so here our dr ip address is 192.168.10.8 right so this is the mapping we have done in our local host file so what we what it will uh, does whenever we are going to access the url from our local system browser so whenever we will hit the google.com it will try to resolve google.com with the ip address of 192.168.10.8 which is the dr ip address okay so by this way we don't need to bring down our primary data center where in the first case we were pointing our dns to the secondary dr ip address so what we are doing here is we are not pointing our dns 
server to the DR load balancer IP. What we are doing is just we are just updating our local PC host file where we are telling that whenever to our browser that whenever we are accessing gold.com, try to resolve it to some different IP. Okay, so in that case, it will refer to your local host file and it will not go to the internal internet DNS to resolve it to the primary load balancer. So now whenever you will access gold.com, it will go to DR site. So you will not have a production outage. So these, these are the two cases where we can do the load balancing testing or not the load balancing. In fact, the DR testing. Okay, in the first case, you need a production outage. But in the second case, you don't need the production outage. And this is the most in use DR drill technique that we follow for most of the clients on quarterly or half yearly or yearly basis without bringing down the production system right so this is about the mapping of your uh, host file and the dns uh, load balancer ip now the question on empty sync how we can do the empty sync that is middle tier sync where we have a software uh, running on the primary data center so as i said we have to replicate the content complete content or you can say the complete file system from your dc to dr okay so dr application should be down when dc is up and running so most of the time what we do is that whenever your dc is up and running we bring down the dr application so that you can copy the content offline okay however it is running on your dc center but what you can copy the content from primary dc to your secondary dr center and replication can be done using rsync storage and volume replication techniques so the replication of the complete software is depend on many techniques if you wanted to replicate the complete file system, if you wanted to replicate the complete volume uh, of your storage, or if you wanted to replicate only the software, then for that, the easy way is you can enable the rsync. Okay, rsync is a technique which is an incremental basis uh, technique for copying the content. Okay, so these are the two things that you can use for the empty sync. And when we talk about the database, so specifically, I'm talking about the case of Oracle. So whenever we have a database in in the dr region it get replicated with the data from the primary data center okay so that means when your data is getting replicated to your dr database it should be in the read only mode it should not be in the read and write mode okay so we kept uh, the database in the dr region in the read only mode and then we take the redo log files from the primary data center and we copy the redo log files to our secondary data center dr data center and then based on the uh, setup of your database, all the changes from the redo log files get replicated immediately to your DR database. Okay, so now when we talk about uh, the different mode of read and write in the production or in the Oracle, okay, then the, we have three modes. The first is the physical standby database. Okay, so physical standby database can receive and apply redo log files while it is open for read only access. So as I said, the DR database should be in the read-only mode when the data gets replicated. So if your database is in physical standby mode, it will receive the redo log files from the primary data center. And then at the same time, changes will get reflected or replicated in your main DR database from the redo log file. Second is logical standby database. So what happened in logical standby database? The logical standby database is kept synchronized with the primary database through SQL apply with transforms the data in the redo received from the primary database into SQL statement. So that means whenever we get the redo log file from the primary data center, center, it gets changed the content in the form of SQL statement from the redo log files and then changes are get apply, applied in your DR database. Third is snapshot standby database is required when we are doing the DR testing. So what is happening in the standby like of physical of your standby database are snapshot standby database received and archived in data from the that it receives. Okay, so what is the difference between physical and logical and then step snapshot? Or if we say that what is the difference between snapshot and then in comparison with the physical and logical is that in a snapshot database, the redo log files get we get from the DC to DR, but the changes is not getting replicated. That means we are, you are only receiving the redo log files, but the changes are not replicated to your database. Okay, so this is the mode that is required when we are doing the DR testing, right? At that time, when we are doing the DR testing, we have to open the database in the read write mode, and we don't want that any data is getting uh, from the DC is writing to your primary database when we are we have opened it in the write mode. Okay, so when we do the DR testing, we open the database in the read write mode, but before that one. 
we have to convert it in the snapshot standby database. Why? Because we don't want the data at the time of testing when our DR database is in read-write mode, any changes from the DC to be applied in the DR. Okay. But yes, the, the file in between when you are doing the testing in the snapshot standby mode, the file, redo log files will get copied to your database. And once your testing is finished and you again change the database back to your physical standby mode, it will again apply all the changes that it has received in between when you have done your testing. Okay, so DR replication can be done using Oracle Data Guard, Oracle Golden Gate, and many more in the market. So when we talk about the Oracle, then you have Oracle Data Guard, then you have Oracle Golden Gate. Apart from that, there are a lot of many more softwares for the replications of the data. So these are the two terms when we talk about the empty sync and the database sync, data sync. Okay. And now when we talk about a DR testing scenarios in a concluded way, so we have a case one when the production is down, right? So what is, what is the case of production down when we, you are switching your primary data center IP to the DR region IP. Okay, so when you're doing such changes at the DNS level, then it is a production outage. Case two, when you are updating your local system host file with, uh, with the DNS name entry corresponding to the IP address of DR load balancer. So in that case, you don't need any production downtime. So case one and case two, all new changes in DR will not be replicated back to DCR, mostly testing data. What is, does it mean? During our testing, when we are doing any testing in, in our production or in our DR, during the testing phase, it will not get replicated back to DC again when our testing is completed. So most of the time, 99.9% .9 of time, it is this is not required because whenever we do any drill or testing in the DR, it is get tested with that some testing data. It is very rare scenario that during the testing, that means you are saying that during the testing, we are using the live production data in the DR. And once your DR testing is finished and then you are switching back to DC, whatever the data that you have inserted in the DR during the testing, it has to be replicated in the DC. This is very rare case, but yes, sometime it is required. So the, the percentage would be only for the 0.1 percentage of customers, but for that, the strategy is completely different, which is not part of this document, this, this video. Okay, so DR testing action plan, when we talk about the action plan for case one and case two, what would be the step-by-step -step action plan for that one? So the case one, when we we said that the, it is required a production downtime because we are mapping our DNS IP from DC to DR, the action plan would be you have to shut down your primary data center applications, break MT and DB sync between DC and DR. So during the testing, you don't want to replicate any data. So you have to break the sync of MT and DB between DC and DR. Then convert DRDB from physical standby to snapshot standby. And why, what is the reason we have discussed in the previous slide? Because we don't want to write the data from the DC to DR when we, the database is open in write mode in the DR and we are doing the testing. Then mount and start DRDB in read mode. Then so once your DB is converted in the snapshot standby, then you have to mount and then start your database in the read write mode in the DR. Make sure DC hostname pointing to DR IPs in the DR host file. Right, you have to map your corresponding host name entries of DC with the corresponding IP of DR, then start the empty services, and then you have to point your DNS load balancer IP to the DR load balancer IP, which cause an outage in the production till you are doing the testing. And then you have to do the testing the services. What is the case of reverting back? You have to stop the empty services, then convert your DB to again physical standby in the DR, and then revert back DNS change which is point back to DCLP. So once your testing is finished, you have to point back your load balancer IP with the DC load balancer IP. Okay, so this is the first case. Now case two is when we have to update local host file with the DR load balancer IP. That means where we don't need any outage in the production. So how we can perform such kind of a testing. So for that, the plan is break MT and DB sync between DC and DR, convert DR again from physical standby to snapshot standby, mount and start the DR in your uh, database in, in DR with in read and write mode. Make sure DC hostname pointing to DR IPs in the DR host file. So till this step, the action plan is same as case one. Then start the services. And after starting the services, you have to update your local host file where you have to point your DNS to the corresponding IP of the DR load balancer, right? And then you can do the testing and this is not required any downtime in production and how to revert back just stop the empty services in dr convert your db again back to physical standby enable sync empty and db and you can revert back the changes whatever you have done in your local host file 
because after that once you will go to access your production uh, your dna it will again try to point to dr once your testing is finished okay so remove that entry and again after that it will your dns url will point to a product primary dc center so this is all about the dc and dr concept how we can perform the different testing and then how we sync the empty and data uh, between dc and dr thanks for watching this video